Good morning, my friends. Welcome to this episode of Healing Your Codependency. I'm Marshall Bircher. And if you're new to me, I help codependents, people pleasers, perfectionists transform their life by becoming aligned with their real value, their real self, capturing their real power so that they can create a life that's satisfying for them. Because that's that's the goal, right? Heal so we can become available to the people, places, and things to bring us a smile. So today I want to talk about something crucial when we're working with attachment systems, especially attachment trauma in the disorganized attachment system or their feel f- fearful avoidant attachment. Those are like the two common labels for this response. What is this attachment orientation or attachment reflex that shows up in our nervous system and our body? A disorganized or complex or fearful avoidant response is one that feels torn between two spots. I'm darned if I do, I'm darned if I don't kind of thing. I need this, but I'm terrified to ask for it is basically the big conflict. I, I, I need to get what I need, but I have to give up what I need to get it. And it, it doesn't make a lot of sense logically when we when we really get into it but emotionally it just means we're torn between um, two very painful options we're either going to receive it with a consequence or we're going to be harmed by not getting it so i starve or i starve kind of thing it's a it's a very very profound in uh, trauma to our attachment system and it's a result of intermittent reinforcement in our primary relationships it's a result of unreliability in the other person especially if this developed as a child for us the person the parent we were bonded to was also the parent that we looked to for attention for protection for shelter for nurture for um, comfort but they were also a threat to us and so in a way um, it would look like this i am i'm scared and i'm going to ask for protection from the person i'm scared of (laughs) <laughs> now sometimes it is I'm scared of this thing out here in the world I'm going to go hey I need help parent I'm scared and then they're like whoa what's wrong with you and I go oh okay now I'm really scared and this creates an enormous amount of conflict in ourselves but this also exists in the avoidant attachment orientation and the anxious attachment orientation too this need for a protector exists in those but generally I want to focus on this one specifically this this came up in one of my weekly uh, coaching mentoring sessions with my students in the codependency healing system Uh, we were discussing this particular need for a student so what does it mean to have a protector so growing up our parents were supposed to be the protector they were supposed to provide a safe shelter a safe emotional space they were there to protect us and defend us against the external threats. They were to help us learn how to stand up for ourselves, to become our own warrior, our own protector as well. They'd have our backs when we made controversial decisions. They would help us understand when to do certain things. They are there to be our guide, to be our shield, to be our container. Until we were able to venture out into the world more on our own and and take on that uh, responsibility, take on that weight, take on that risk. When we don't have that, we grow up with a lot of anxiety. We grow up with a lot of panic. We grow up with a lot of internalized powerlessness and maybe even helplessness and overwhelm. Especially for a, uh, a child to enter the big world, it's overwhelming. It's scary. There's so many unknowns. There's so many things we instinctively know we don't know. And then we encounter things that we don't understand, we don't know what to do about. And when we don't have a parent there as a guide, we don't have a leader in our world that helps protect us and helps us understand what to do with the things we encounter. Well, we feel unsafe, we feel exposed, we feel lost. And a lot of times we end up putting one foot in and one foot out of situations. Maybe we're romantic interested in someone and they're giving us some signals but we we feel this this pull between two opposites you're like i want to be close to them but i don't i don't want to risk what that means to me or what that's going to take from me these are very very intense very scary things for us to take on so it's no wonder that we wrestle with this 
because we don't know how to navigate this. We, we're trying to be safe here and try to be safe there. We have not learned how to handle danger, risk, exposure, vulnerability, um, and feel safe enough to face it. And the reason why is we don't have a sense of protection. We don't have an internalized felt sense experience of protection. We don't have an external community that provides protection. We don't have people who have our back protection. We, we have likely become loners and highly independent, doing it on our own kind of thing. Um, I would call that counter-dependency because <laughs> we don't want to get too close because that means danger, but we don't want to get too far because that also means danger too far away. It's a huge conflict for us. So how do we start cultivating a protector? Well, first, it's important that we ourselves become a protector of our internal selves, our little younger parts of ourselves that live within us. They're the ones who express specific memories, specific pain or desires, habits, impulses. So in my work, I call that internal aspects of self. And other uh, models like internal family systems are called parts. And they're, those parts have roles and things like that, I like protector parts and firefighters and managers and stuff in those models. In my model, you're, they're all parts are just parts. And then we ask it what its purpose is, what it's trying to do for us, and then what it wants to be able to do instead and then we can help it heal and grow and become safe enough to do that well part of that work is me the adult self the the uh parent self becomes the protector of these internal younger parts of myself and we do that with a very specific approach first parts that have been abandoned parts have been uh, neglected parts that have been abused when they've advocated for their needs they need one thing up front, and that is your simple presence with them. And that's it. The way we accomplish that is, uh, is connecting with them, acknowledging them. Hey, I, I'm sensing you. I feel you. I feel your anxiety. I feel your panic. I feel your lack of control. I feel like your, your desire to control things, or I feel that desire to push away and avoid this. I feel that in my body, and I am here with you in this i am with you in this i'm gonna pause and give it a moment to land to let that part wrestle with it to see how that feels to us so that we can be present with it so we can actually demonstrate being with it in its experience. This will help us get more information depending on how much it wants to share. Sometimes that takes time to earn that trust. But it empowers us to become more and more present and connected and knowledgeable about this aspect of ourselves that we're working with. That's all we need to do because that brings in a sense of protection. It brings in a sense of presence that, oh, I'm not alone in this anymore. There's someone else here with me. Maybe I'm going to be okay. That's all you need to do right now. There's additional steps that will come based on what they, that part, communicates, what they need in the moment. But that first step is becoming present with them. And hey, I am with you in this. I believe you. I will not leave you. That's it. That's all that has to be done. And that's all you do in response to them when they show up is that entrance into just being present with this part of yourself that's wrestling with that thing. That's feeling those big feelings. That is fearing that big, scary outcome. That is really desiring that really big outcome. Whatever it is, or with it there. This brings companionship to this part, and that adds protection now, it may not trust you. It may not reject. It may reject you. It may push you away. It might feel really, really intense and uncomfortable. Allow that to be there too. And the way you respond to those things is, I am with you in this too. And of course, you're gonna re you're rejecting me. Of course, you're pushing away. Of course, you don't trust it. That's okay. You don't need to. You're gonna do that because that's 
what feels most safe to you right now. And I got to earn your trust a bit, huh? I got to show up in a way that, that, that validates the words I'm saying. The more we are consistent in how we re- show up to our emotions, how we respond to our emotions, the more trust we build with ourselves, the deeper that safety goes. And that allows this energy that's so packed and is so intensely like compressed to expand, to express, to breathe, and eventually dissipate. And that's where we start getting real action and real change in our world because now we, that part is no longer trying to protect itself. It feels protected enough to do what it needs to do and eventually do what it wants to do in its life. My friends, this is how we start building a sense of protection in ourselves. This is the first step, not the whole process. Additional parts of building uh, protection and safety in our lives is about building into... uh, is about building into our intuitive self, being able to read situations, trust our instincts about things, about developing skills and how to respond to situations around us, and then ultimately building enough experience so we can choose people, places, and things that are inherently aligned with us and our well-being so that we're just adding more things to our world that that enhance our sense of safety. But ultimately, real safety is an internal thing. It's based on our skills, our intuition, and our experience. It is not based on the environment behaving a certain way. So I'm always responsible for my level of safety because I'm the one putting myself in those situations. And if I find myself in a situation I don't want to be in, my responsibility is to get out of that situation in a way that works for me. That's where our power lies, and that's where we generate internalized Safety is, oh, I can handle this. I can respond to this. I can deal with what shows up. That takes a lot of the risk away, a lot of the threat away, because we're willing to work with what shows up and respond to it rather than try to control it or deny it um, or resist it or avoid it in some way. Instead, it's like, there it is. Confront it. Move through it. That's where you're going to get more confidence, more safety in your world, and ultimately you're going to have the Um, that sense of internal um, protector in you because you're standing up for you. And then you're also building community around you that helps you accomplish that, that has your back in these big risks and the things that you take on in your world. So in my work, we focus on developing this in the codependency healing system. It is open for its semi-annual enrollment. Um, It closes August 2nd. Details are below in the description. But this is where you get the opportunity to work with me uh, because we have four weekly live calls. We have homework support calls. We have the practice session calls where we practice tools and pra- and other practices together. The homework support calls are where you, you watch the on-demand training. You come and ask your questions there. You get help with that. And uh, those happen on Mondays and on Tuesdays. We have live mentoring in the morning and live mentoring in the evening where you can bring yourself to the call. And if you want celebration, support, or guidance, you bring something there where we can celebrate, support, or guide you. And I can be there to uh, personally mentor you in something that you're facing in your world at this moment. So big, big focus on that element along with the five core focuses of restoring emotional safety, sanity and reality, personal power and sovereignty, your indomitable worth, true identity, and fundamentals of relating. So the codependency healing system is a deep dive in our healing work. It takes us out of that survival phase that the foundation course focuses on moves us through the healing phase, which is all about that codependency healing system, which preps us for the creation phase where we go into the transformation system and start creating things that we really want. That's the work we do there. So check out that below. And right now, my friends, take this process of becoming a protector for yourself and to your world by responding to your pain, to your fear, to your shame, to the anxieties that show up for you with this. Is hey, I am with you in this. You could go a little deeper, and I love you anyway. Be present with that. Let me know your thoughts and what you experience as you practice this in your life in the comments below. And if you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Watching on Facebook, hi. And if you're listening via podcast, hi. Go gently, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye. Hey, thank you for listening to today's episode. 
And are you looking for additional guidance in how to exit your codependency and create a life that's satisfying for you? If so, come join me in my email community. You can do that by going to join.freethesop.com or checking the description below and clicking the link there to join that community. You will receive more mentorship and guidance from me on how to navigate the three phases of thriving beyond codependency, those phases being survival, healing, and creation, as well as opportunities to join my courses, workshops, and other trainings that I offer throughout the year. So come join us there, and I will see you in our email community. Bye-bye.